Wait for it! <laughs> Hello and welcome one and all my fellow adventurers. Today I am going to share with you how to get a legendary weapon that is not only ridiculously difficult to get if you don't know what you're doing and where you're looking, but one that is absolutely packed with goodies that make it genuinely one of the best weapons in the entire game. I mean, yeah, it's legendary, so it should, but it feels like especially legendary. Like, there's a lot going on here. It gives you an extra attack every turn just for holding it. That's like a free level 5 multi-class dip on a martial class to get a hold of. So what am I talking about then? Well, it is this beautifulness, the Julis Prerogative. This is a rapier, a finesse weapon that's a d8 of piercing damage and a bonus d4 necrotics. That's already very nice. It's a plus three, as you can see. So, you get Elegant Duelist. This will let you crit on a 19 if it's the only weapon you're holding. So, 5% goes to 10% chance to crit when you attack. Yeah, that's fairly decent, but also you get an additional reaction per turn. So two opportunity attacks at an easy example. Yeah, that's quite potent. Then we get Withering Cut. When we hit with uh, this weapon, uh, we can use a reaction. And remember, we've got an extra one now to deal more necrotic damage equal to your proficiency. So really, already, it's just a damage monster. And that's if it didn't have Jeweler's Enthusiasm. And this, when you're not dual wielding, so you're just holding this, you can make another attack with your bonus action every turn. So on a level 11 fighter, you could just attack four times just as default every turn with this thing. That is absolutely beautiful. And then you also get challenge to duel, just as a little bit of a bonus, put that bleeding on and make you the only target. So if you're on a tanky class with this, yeah, that's quite a nice bit of utility, but it is by far the weakest of the four main perks. So you can see how much potential this weapon has to just be brutal in what it does. Repeated bonus necrotic damage, high critting attacks over and over and over every turn. But beyond that, we can take advantage of the crit in a numerous ways. One easy example is something like Reckless Attack on a Barbarian. So this gives you advantage on your attacks, and yeah, obviously that's great, but what does that actually mean? Well, advantage is two dice rolls instead of one when we attack which means you have two chances at rolling either the 19 or the 20 needed for this to crit with Elegant Duelist. So you're upping your chances even more if you play it on a class that can consistently advantaged attack. So let's just have a little actual uh, combat example with this then, as we upset uh, this guard here and get into a brawl. I will let him have his first turn, but one thing to point out is you can challenge to duel even while raging. So if I start to raging here and then let him have a free couple shots at somehow trying to kill a 115 health half damage taking barbarian, we can still challenge, which is really, really cool, and I indeed will. And hey, now he's compelled to duel us. I'll let him have another free go, so I have a full turn to show off the sword, but now when we hit him, we can start making him bleed, so that's very cool. So yeah, reckless attack will get advantage advantage on our attack, so a much higher chance to crit, and then when we do stab, we get this, the reaction withering cut, to do additional necrotic damage, which we will then take. And then oh, once more, off we go, and the bonus extra reaction from the blade, even more damage. But we're not done yet, because we have enthusiasm for the third attack from the bonus action, which again, I, it's it's so good, and the animation for it, there's the like slow Slap swipe round is incredibly satisfying too. And uh, he very nearly died to the bleed. Obviously, if I'd had my great weapon master turned on, it would have been much easier, but I wanted him to survive long enough to actually get everything off. And hey, you can also necrotic damage his corpse. So 
just just really really show him anyway then how exactly do you get a hold of this fine piece of equipment let's get into that so it should be said to begin with then that this is tied to the hag anti-ethel that you can fight in act one and the girl Marina that you can save now if you do save Marina and defeat the hag then you will be in a better position here but it's not strictly required it just cuts you off a few extra awards with that disclaimer then once you get to act three and get to the lower city when you walk in and you are next to the basilisk gate waypoint just above you to the north is the basilisk gate barracks you want to enter here and then enter the office and you will find a lady having a go at the head guard there basically this conversation goes nowhere but you find out that she has had her child well lost or presumably stolen and wants her found so of course being the noble adventurers we are we agree to help her out this takes us to where we need to go next or at least nearish because the child was taken from the blushing mermaid a bar towards the other end of the city but before we go straight there you want to head to old garlo's place this is an abandoned rundown building and inside you will find a kind of hag survivors group which is a really amusing concept by itself like hi yes i've been uh, i've been cursed by a hag ah thank you for letting me speak Deal with the conversation when you have it, be all friendly, and you'll learn that Marina, if she's alive for you, is upstairs, but she's feeling a little bit sheepish. We want to turn her back to normal, so to do that, find a little voodoo doll that's around the room. Now, if you damage it or interact with it incorrectly, it will teleport to a different location and damage Marina. The easiest way to solve this is a party member that can remove curse, remove curse on the doll, and jobs are good in. This will cause one of the hag survivors to reveal himself to be a hag worshipper. So do a murder on him and talk to Marina and catch up. She'll tell you about the child. You'll tell her, oh, I'm already happening to be looking for that child. And it's just like wonderful, you know, old friends reuniting. Eventually, she'll point you to a safe that's in this building. In the safe is the recipe for a certain anti-hag weapon, Hag's Bane, and the main ingredient, a dried fey flower to make it. This is important. You want to craft one of these. Any essence will do, so refine down anything that you have that can make that happen. If not, you'll have to go get the materials, but get the Hag's Bane. Now, if Marina isn't here, in theory, the information for Hagsbane won't be here because it's her that's been collecting information on hunting hags. So, there is another way around this to complete this quest and get the legendary without Hagsbane, which I will go over once we get to that point. But if you do have Marina and can craft Hagsbane, then very much do so. After that, we can finally, yes, head to the Blushing Mermaid. Walk on in, go upstairs, and you will see... A very drunk captain, the owner of the bar, kind of wandering about. Have a chat with her, and eventually she'll be like, You know what, can I just pay you a load of money to go murder the mother of the child that's been stolen? That'd be much easier. And, well outright refuse her and she will reveal herself to be ethel surprise surprise at that point you'll have a chat with her and she will you know sensibly in her condition because she's eaten the kid not want to fight you but she will set a load of goons on you so kill the goons and then we're ready to chase her down now if like me you have got the bug where and it's so sad there is so many bugs in act three i adore this game to bits it's my game of the year but Ah, oh. if like me she's on zero health and you don't get the follow-up conversation and you just see her kind of wandering around in hag form what you need to do before you make her transform is heal the pirate with any healing spell so she's not technically on zero health then have the conversation refuse to kill and everything will or should flow as normal so once you've dealt with the enemies in the bar chase ethel down the stairs into the basement you can hop up onto this little platform that looks all naturey and rootsy through the wall, 
and you'll find yourself in her Baldur's Gate lair. And it's in here that we'll have a final showdown. We don't need to worry about going over to the other side of the room and killing a fresh batch of mask mind controlled henchmen. Just go straight round and up through a trap door and you will have another chat with Ethel and of course she'll be very upset that you followed her. Now a fight will break out, she will teleport the masked people into the room but you don't need to kill them. You can save them and to do that just ignore them till you have beaten Ethel. Step one in beating Ethel here then is killing the three healing mushrooms around the room. This is what lets a hag revive from the seemingly dead over and over. They use these mushrooms as a source of the magic that lets them do that. So first kill those three. Once they are dead, well we want to use the hag's bane we prepared on Ethel herself. So make sure it's the real one and not a clone. And when we land it on on her and perhaps save it beforehand because missing this would be very sad, she will get nauseous and quite literally regurgitate the child. This saves her and uh, completes the quest to find her. Of course, we still at this point then have to finish off Ethel, which we will do. Now, if you don't have Hagsbane, you can kill Ethel with non-lethal damage by toggling that on in your passives and then when she gets knocked out on one health, you can save the child that way instead. It's a little bit more delicate, but it can be done, so uh, do that if you have to. So, uh, once that is resolved and Ethel has been dealt with, all the mass people will turn friendly. The uh, captain, you can talk to her, she'll be all pleased, and I would recommend maybe at this point pickpocketing her for a certain key that you can use later on in a different part of the city that's very much worth having. Other than that, there isn't too much in the way of uh, crazy loot to grab here, except for one particular ring. This, for a Chaos uh, Magic Sorcerer specifically, is hilarious because it means every time you cast, you will trigger wild magic, just on chain. So, do with that what you will, worth having. Then we can go back and talk to Marina in uh, the old Gallo's place. She will, of course, be very happy that Ethel is finally dead dead, and she will reward us with a necklace that gives you advantage on intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saving throws. Yeah. That is not bad at all and worth having on someone. Then we can finally go talk to Laura and, uh, well, the child will already be there and she will be understandably very grateful and this is where we get the object of our desire, a relic from her pirating days, the Sword Julis Prerogative. We know all about that, but you will also get a second reward that is a Amulet of the Wind Rider, which basically gives you the ability to cast Gust of Wind and get Gaseous form, which are two, you know, kind of nice utility as spells, and definitely there are worse necklaces to have in the game, and it's a nice extra bonus. And at that point, you are indeed done. Oh, so I hope you have found that useful, all the little ins and outs to getting this legendary rapier, and I hope you enjoy using it on your finesse-esque characters to utterly annihilate people, and it's honestly such a fun weapon to use. There's so many attacks, the crits, the extra reactions, it just really is a beautifully designed piece of equipment. For now then, like you enjoyed this, subscribe and hit the bell for more, consider supporting the future of the channel on a Patreon down below, and until we meet again, a good bye. Josh, yeah. Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice to reiterate that it is nice to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is uh goodbye. <laughs>